So for me, when the world changed as a result of the pandemic, um, I think there was an awakening amongst investors that started looking at gold and silver again for its traditional role as a safe haven investment. Uh, even the most recent dramatic spike in prices shed some light on a lot of uncomfortable truths about the general state of our economy. And obviously this is driven by a lot of the headlines that we're seeing in the media, uh, a lot to do with the significant government intervention that we're seeing from central banks worldwide who have pledged to print unlimited amounts of money to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so to give you a sense of numbers, uh, on the US we're looking at uh, over $3 trillion as of September. On the Canadian side, we've already accumulated a $120 billion deficit uh, in just three months. And the European Union has agreed to 750 billion euro stimulus package to support its economy. So again, we think these are just starting points because if you look at history, the expansion of the Federal Reserve balance sheet is a multi-year process. And the thesis for gold is that the more fiat currency that we have in circulation, the more dollars it takes to buy an ounce of gold. We continue to see very high unemployment numbers across many countries worldwide, and the interest rate environment, while we just really don't see uh, many paths forward at all for governments to increase those rates anytime soon. So again, these are all factors that support a robust gold and silver market. And even as of recently, Warren Buffett took a half a billion dollar position in uh, Barrett Gold, and that certainly put our sector back on the map. He used to be Mr. Anti-Gold for the longest time ever. So um, investors are definitely looking at this as uh, a long-term signal for our space. So the combination of these macro events, whether it be QE, or US Chinese political tensions or Brexit, they have all brought back investment demand into our space. Uh, we've seen this in the ETF investment demand for both gold and silver, which are now at record highs. Um, so on the gold side, the physical holdings represent a market value of approximately $2 billion. And on the silver side, we are nearing uh, 1 billion ounces. So side note, the reason why this is important is because ETFs add bullion to their funds when they anticipate having to issue additional blocks of shares to keep up with market demand uh, when prices are rising. So the fact that we've seen um, six consecutive months of net inflows in the silver ETF world is a very bullish sign. So even at these levels, we feel silver is relatively undervalued as compared to gold if you observe how silver has behaved historically. The strongest returns in silver are driven by gold gains, and we feel that in this particular cycle, silver will outperform uh, both as a function of a rising gold price and as a function of a falling ratio. Silver is the ultimate leverage play on gold because it almost always outperforms. It is a much smaller market, uh, so it tends to be more volatile. And what it usually does is it lags in the beginning and then plays catch up in a hurry. So what we're looking at here is a graphic that shows six trading periods since 1975 that show the upside potential for silver in years following a peak in the gold to silver ratio, okay? And just as a reminder, we uh, just this summer had the record high gold ratio of 124 to one. On average, the change from peak to trough of the ratio is three years. And silver on average uh, delivers a return of over 200%, while gold on average delivers a return of over 60%. So reason number four is very important also, and the truth of the matter is that there is a very, very big scarcity of silver producers and silver names out there at all. Um, so what we're looking at here is some of the more commonly held silver names, particularly the 2019 full year actuals revenue mix. And here you can see on the right hand side that all of the quote unquote senior silver producers 
actually have less than 50% silver in their revenue mix. The reason for this is because on their pathway to growth, they had to acquire gold assets that are much more abundant and available. So really, there are only three mid-tier silver companies, which Endeavor Silver is one of, that offers more than 50% silver in the revenue stream. And if we look at the availability of construction-ready projects, the scarcity factor is even more prevalent uh, for, for runway growth for companies. Um, most of the peers in the silver space are forced to transact to obtain that growth for investors, whereas Endeavor Silver actually has a development project in our portfolio already. And here you can see that on the left-hand side, um, in the gold world, there's over 100 publicly listed assets uh, globally that in the last three years have filed either a pre-feasibility study and or a feasibility study. But in the silver space, there is literally only a handful of, a handful of names. And so that's why when we talk about uh, the scarcity premium, it's very important. Uh, this is why in the last bull, bull run for precious metals, the silver is traded at much higher multiples than the golds. So we know silver is a monetary metal, it acts like gold, it used to be money, but there are many exciting other drivers for silver. Um, over the past 10 years, it has emerged as a very strategic industrial metal um, because it's a green metal. And so what that means is that it will play a significant role in making our planet uh, much more environmentally friendly in the future. Uh, I think this will be a key area of impact over the next five years, so specifically uh, increasing our reliance on renewable energy, which will benefit uh, silver demand for solar panels and the increased electrification of automobiles going forward. Again, I think that over the next five years, this could be disruptive as a lot of economies focus on reducing our carbon footprint. So in conclusion, I would say hold on to your silvers. Um, my personal opinion is that even if we do develop a vaccine in 2020, the structural damage that we've done to our economies can't be reversed. And so the focus will always shift back to the economy. I also think that investors in general are just finding it more and more difficult to avoid um, owning gold and silver for one simply on the notion that you know we're all going to have stronger earnings and expanding margins but more importantly um, to diversify your portfolio to reduce risk and protect yourself from the systemic risk that we're all going to face um, so thank you so much for listening and if you have any further questions please feel free to shoot me an email and i would be happy to get back to you thanks <music>